Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a special episode and I get and I guess we're actually gonna do two dinosaurs at once again. So the today's dinosaurs are is actually Matabarosaurus and Giganotosaurus. So let's start off with Matabarosaurus. Matabarosaurus is actually uh, 30 feet long and approximately three tons and would actually be and it's actually found in Australia so it's an Australian dinosaur um, it's related to Iguanodon um, and also it actually has uh, some characteristic features that actually make it a very odd looking dinosaur one on the skull is that it has like this like weird like bone like like ridge on its nose and it has and the nostrils actually go right through there too so it actually is a good indication that actually it made sounds with this with this weird look with this weird looking nose and so if you ever seen um, the TV series uh, walking with dinosaurs um, in the fifth episode where they actually were in Antarctica uh, talking about um, the dinosaurs that actually lived uh, during the time when uh, Antarctica was uh, seasonally warmer uh, than it was today and also would have actually had a very deciduous uh, kind of forested uh, environment so it would actually be very because Antarctica would be very very different from today it w you wouldn't see ice caps you wouldn't see glaciers or anything like that you would actually see a bunch of forests it's warmer and also it's but during the winter it can get cold that you can actually get it will be cold but not as cold as as today it would actually probably be probably like around like mid 30s or somewhere around there it would be actually temperatures where frost would actually be common uh in winter but we actually know that dinosaurs can actually survive in the cold so that actually would be a pretty good indication that they actually did live there uh, year round but not not Montebarosaurus. Montebarosaurus would not have actually uh, handled the cold very well uh, as uh, as probably like dinosaurs like Leonidasaurus. But when we actually look at Montebarosaurus, it's one of the largest dinosaurs that was actually found in Australia, but it's not totally the largest. There's actually sauropods that were actually found in Australia. So wouldn't be actually that much of a surprise to actually see bigger dinosaurs be found in Australia. But since it is actually found in an area of, of Australia, it was named after the area of Australia, Matabura. So, and when we actually look at Matabarasaurus, it's very stocky. It's a very stocky looking uh, iguanodont. So it would actually be very powerful. So an adult, it would actually be very, very powerful. No predators would actually mess with a healthy adult. The juveniles and the old and the sick would actually be the ones uh, that would be very would be much at risk from predation but the predators around Australia were very different but I mean we actually see that there's uh, allosaurs that were actually found in Australia they were very rare uh, during this time in the Cretaceous like around 110 million years ago so it would actually be very rare to find uh, allosaurs uh, at this particular time because the allosaurs would have actually pretty much uh, evolved into the Carcharodontosaurus and pretty much uh, the Alice the Australian allosaurs would have actually been the more common predator uh, in that time but there's other predators there too but I can't I'm not very specific about the dinosaurs in Australia so it would actually be um, very interesting of what Australia might have been like uh, in uh, in 110 million years ago but even though it would still be tropical, it would actually be a tropical environment. But also, there could probably could be drier environments uh, in Australia. Australia is like the continent, the island that is filled with experiments of of everything. I mean, it's it's like you you just stepped on a, a scientific um, like laboratory uh, in the world, and basically just mixed and just totally toss the rules out the window uh for biology and you just totally uh just create like these whole weird looking animals uh at that particular time it, pretty much you know as australia is just pretty much this like flaw 
flurry of activity of, of biology. So it would actually be really, really interesting of what, what kind of weird dinosaurs would actually be around at that time. But the extinction of Martyrosaurus and some of the dinosaurs in that time of Australia would have been just climate change because is when the climate changes, uh, the plant eaters suffer first because if they can't eat the plants, the new plants that actually came about, then pretty much they're actually not going to survive uh, for very long. They would just starve themselves uh, to extinction, and then the predators would actually follow that. They would eat the carcasses first, but then when there's no more meat, they take on each other, and then they pretty much just uh, uh, starve into extinction as well. But now let's actually look at the dinosaur is actually bigger than T-Rex, Giganotosaurus. Now, Giganotosaurus is found in Argentina. It is actually uh, around f between 40, pretty much 45 feet long and possibly could go up to 50 feet long. And of course, found in Argentina, but probably can weigh around maybe 7 to 9 tons. And it is the largest predatory dinosaur found in South America. And Giganotosaurus was actually discovered around 1995, so it was pretty new uh, at that time to actually find a giant carnivorous dinosaur that would actually be bigger than T Rex. That was when, and you can see the 90s was actually pretty much the, the decade when you actually started to find uh, dinosaurs that are, carnivorous dinosaurs that could actually be larger than T Rex. So it would actually be very, very interesting. It's it was like a flurry of new finds. But this is a Giganotosaurus tooth right here. And one of the interesting things apart about the skull anatomy of Giganotosaurus, it's, it's a long skull. And uh, the teeth here are very blade-like. As you can see, it's a very thin tooth. And when we actually try to compare that to a Tyrannosaurus rex, they're very, they're very, very different. What we see here is that with Tyrannosaurus rex, it's a very thick tooth. It's very almost conical, and it has, and it's very thick and strong. Whereas Giganotosaurus has a very flattened tooth, very blade-like. Was not really designed to actually go right through the bone. Tyrannosaurus rex would actually be more designed to actually penetrate through thick hide, muscle, and bone. So this was so Tyrannosaurus rex was way ahead uh, of uh, Giganotosaurus in terms of of advancement. So Tyrannosaurus rex would actually be much more advanced than Giganotosaurus. But also the bite force of Giganotosaurus would not be as strong as as uh, Tyrannosaurus rex. And the reason why is because you see with the blade-like teeth you can't bite very hard. Because if you do try to bite hard with, with knife-like teeth, then you're pretty much going to break off a tooth. But even though with carnivorous dinosaurs, that's no big no biggie at all. Because you see, they actually they actually just lose teeth every time. It's, it's basically kind of like sharks. You know, they always they lose they lose teeth all the time when a uh, when a tooth when a tooth was ready to fall off, it'll fall off. You know, that's pretty much how it was. They call those shed teeth. But also, another thing about Giganotosaurus, when we actually look at the brain of Giganotosaurus and compare it to like the Tyrannosaurus and the, and the Dromaeosaurus, or, or nicknamed the Raptors, we see that the Carcharodontosaurus, which is basically the family that Giganotosaurus does belong to, it actually has a very small brain. And then compared to a Tyrannosaurus and also to the Dromaeosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus and the Dromaeosaurus were actually had a much had much bigger brains, and also they actually are much more sophisticated, and also they actually per, actually behaved very differently than Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus would actually rely on instinct and pretty much um, rely on more of ambush as for its uh, hunting style. But the animals that Giganotosaurus would have actually hunted would probably be like uh, a Margosaurus, a sauropod with weird looking spines coming out of its neck. Um, <clears throat> you can also actually have Argentinosaurus, the largest sauropod uh, 
known in South America, but there's probably bigger sauropods out there uh, that we don't know about. But there is dinosaur, there are sauropods that are bigger than Argentinosaurus. And also when we actually, but also there could possibly be iguanodonts uh, during that time, but the abilisaurs would actually be starting to come about. The abilisaurs are actually these dinosaurs, are actually these carnivorous dinosaurs. They actually have very short, short skulls, but have very powerful jaws and has, and has like has like these horns on its head. So it would actually be pretty, kind of almost look like a chame, a, a giant chameleon with teeth. And also the abilisaurs didn't really have that much of showing of arms. So it would actually, so you would actually be looking at looking at like, like really dubby arms, smaller than T. Rexes. And also, another thing about Gigantosaurus, the arms are actually going to be a little bit longer than Tyrannosaurus Rex, but also they're very weak. They're not going to be used for grabbing. So it's actually, because since it does have uh, longer arms than Tyrannosaurus Rex, but they cannot reach uh, very far. And also, the arms are not as strong uh, as we think they were. So they would actually... They would just basically be disusing their their skulls to actually uh, do all the dirty work. The skulls and the teeth. So pretty much using the, these kinds of teeth would actually be the number one weapon for Giganotosaurus. Another thing about Giganotosaurus with its weight, it would actually be slow. So it would not actually be designed to chase after prey for a very long distance. So because since it has robust legs, and also it actually has a huge amount of weight that it cannot run very fast at all. So probably the approximate speed of Giganotosaurus would probably be between 10 to 15 miles per hour. It could go up to 20 miles per hour, but it'd probably be more of a sub-adult that would actually be running 20 miles an hour. But when you actually look at the senses, the sense of smell is still good. The eyesight is decent. It actually would be very good, good eyesight facing sideways. But facing forward, it's very poor, because since the eyes are on the side of its on on the side of its head, so it would actually be only looking one way, like two different ways, because they're not really designed like Tyrannosaurus Rex, where or, or otherwise Tyrannosaurus, just because their eyes are actually going to because Tyrannosaurus eyes are facing forward to give a clear binocular vision, a much better vision than the other carnivorous dinosaurs. And also, with Giganotosaurus, the number one, <coughs> excuse me, the number one prey it would actually be going after are the sauropods, so the long-necked dinosaurs. So, and it's a good reason to actually just not be very fast at all. It's because your prey is not fast. So when your prey is not that fast, you don't need speed to actually capture it. And also with with that, there has been finds of uh, multiple giant carnivorous dinosaurs found together to actually possibly indicate that they actually lived and hunted in groups. But they're mainly going to be family groups. They're not going to be like two like like different animals like co coexisting with each other. Because if you took like like a like say a male Giganotosaurus that is separate from another male Giganotosaurus that are so totally uh, different. Uh, relative wise and if you try to put them together they start they would just start fighting they would just fight over territory and over food and also for mates but if you actually have a family group then you actually don't have to fight over the food as much and also you don't have to fight over the territory so it would actually be very useful for Giganosaurus to actually live in hunting groups but since it's not going to be very sophisticated uh, behavior, it wouldn't actually be as sophisticated as uh, as uh, the Dromaeosaurus or the Tyrannosaurus. And of course, the extinction of Giganotosaurus is pretty much just climate change, and also with the depletion, and also the the decline of its prey species. That the prey, if the prey species go, if its number one food source is going away, then pretty much it's not going to live very long. Because you see, if the abilisaurs were actually going to start taking over uh, South America, then pretty much it's going to actually just have uh, all sorts of problems. Because the abilisaurs would actually be 
like roaming around, hunting all hunting everywhere, and also they probably be showing a much better behavior, um, much more sophisticated behavior than Giganotosaurus, and also they probably have a much stronger bite too. So they actually probably had uh, no chance of trying to actually hunt. So Giganotosaurus would have no chance of actually hunting down smaller prey to actually. Um, to sustain its lifestyle because you see if you're only specialized in killing us in only killing certain amount certain prey then it's a flaw because you see if a billy source can, can attack sauropods and smaller prey species then they actually have a much better chance of survival so trigonosaurus probably would just die off just because of climate change and also the, its prey species has has gone extinct. So this was pretty much this simple way of, of how it was actually done. All right, that's it for now. And the next week it would actually be uh, answering questions episode. So if you got a question, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. And also you can actually post your questions on the comment section of a post that I actually put on on my Facebook fan page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Post your questions on the comment section and I'll answer for you as, as, as best as I can. And also you can follow me on Twitter at CSGrawl and make, and because I always post pr pretty cool stuff on, on Twitter. And also <clears throat> make sure to keep your questions short and to the point. And also keep your, you can also keep your questions clean too because this, this last semester I have had a couple questions that actually are very that are just told derogatory I could not use those questions so keep your questions clean and also make sure to keep them short and to the point and that way I can actually answer it a lot better all right that, and also make sure to take care of the people around you and also for your younger people out there make sure to listen to your parents your teachers and your guardians those are the best motivation you can have for a good education it's very important to have a good education because you'll get a good job in the future all right that's it for now and I'll see you guys next week